My name is Vincent Yohama. I have never ever attended Shiloh before, but I heard of Shiloh. And last year, Shiloh, I make up my mind to attend it. And on the first day of the program, I heard our bishop said, 2012 Shiloh was someone else Shiloh, but this year Shiloh is yours. And I said, yes, it is mine indeed. And on the last day of the program, as we are about to round up, my phone rang, but immediately I switched it off to avoid distraction. And as we share the grace, I put on my phone. And in less than five minutes, the phone rang again. And when I picked the call, a lady asked me, Vincent, where are you? I said, we have just rounded up from the Shiro program. She said, before I should reach my house, I should pass through her office. And on getting there, she gave me a contract I was not qualified for it. I said, Madam, I'm not in a position to handle this contract, but will you permit me to look for someone else who will handle the contract for you? She said, I should go ahead and do so. And to my surprise, 20% of that contract sums and money was given to me as my own share, which I was not qualified for it. I return all the glory to God. Hallelujah. Very prophetic utterance. God bless him with a miraculous contract. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Basi Edenbasi. I'm here to testify and thank God for saving my life. I was involved in a costly motor accident. The car some assaulted twice. I was driving with my younger brother. Well, before the journey, I had a mantle on the dashboard and I noted the tires and the engine. So when all this happened under a twinkle of an eye, I came out and my brother, without no scratch or anything, to the glory of God, the pictures, it's not something you can see. The car is beyond repairs, but I'm here to testify that not even a scratch and nobody believed that we came out alive. It's only God that did it. Hallelujah. Why not clap some more for Jesus? It's a faithful God. Exceeding grace. By the grace of God, my name is Sister Sheila Onwafe. I'm privileged to work with the sanctuary unit. On the 26th to 27th, I had a terrible dream. I saw a pit. A very big pit. Then I was thinking of how I would cross over to the pit, to the other side. But a wind just carried me to the other side. I woke up, it was a dream. I was so surprised. I took my Bible, I read the book of Psalm 32, verse 8. Then I went back to sleep. In the morning of the 27th, I went to the office. Then I gave me, they called me that I have a letter. The letter that was given to me was a sack letter. And I remember the pit. I prayed. On Saturday of that week, I came to Goshen here. After walking on Saturday, I now placed the letter of sack in the altar here. On the 31st, I went back to my office. I went to greet my AGM marketing. He asked me how is the work. I told him of the sack letter. He now asked me if they've given me a letter of employment before I said yes. He asked me to bring the letter. I brought the letter of employment to him. I gave him the, the sack letter. He now said the sack letter was an error. They have to withdraw it. I came to return all the glory to God. God is able to make a grace abound to you. Our God is able to make a grace abound to you. So that in all things, at all times, so that in all things, having all that you need. You will abound in every good thing. Abound, having all that you need. Abound in every good thing. You will abound. Oh yes, you will. You will abound. God is able to make a grace. God is able to make a grace. A grace abound to you. My God, wonderful grace, God. Always about to you, so that we know, so that we all things, all time, so that we all things, 
have it all that you need. You will abound in every good thing. Abound, have it all that you need. Yeah. In every good thing, you will abound. Oh, yes, you will. You will abound in every good thing. Abound. In everything you mean, about in every good you will abide. Oh, yes, you will. You will abide. Come on, put your son, Jesus. It's worthy of our prayer, Jesus. So that in all things, at all times, so that in all things, at all that you need, I say you will abide in every good thing. Abide, having all that you need, I say in every you will abide. I say that you will abide in every good thing. Abide, I'm in everything you need. Abide in every good you will abide. Oh yes, you will. You will abide. I say that you will abide. You will abide. You will abide. Oh, you will abide. You will abide in every good abound having all that you need abound in every good thing I say you will abide you will abide in every good thing abound having all that you need you will abide in every you will abide Oh yes you will, you will abide. Give him, give him praise, this body. Give the Lord a clap offering. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you this morning. Let us lift up our hands together and give glory to Jesus. For he is good and his mercy endures forever. Worship his majesty. Lift up your voice on high. Glorify the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord from the depth of our hearts. We give you glory. We give you honor. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the month which the Lord has made. This is the year which the Lord has made. Give him the glory due to him. Exalt his name. Father, there is none to compare with you. For this God is our God. We give him the glory and the honor and the majesty. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you and thank you and thank you. And thank you, and thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' precious name. That you are alive till today is the doing of the Lord. That you have seen a new year is the act of God. We must never take God for granted. We must never think anything is, 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 is just happening because it should happen. It is because God made it so. Joyfully, consciously, lift up your two hands one more time and thank him that he brought you into the new year. Celebrate him that he brought you into the new year. Give him the glory due to him that he brought you into the new year. Appreciate him. Exalt his name. Worthy is the Lamb of God. 
Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus. I'm alive and well, my family and I. I give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. Isaiah chapter 45. Take this prophetic word and speak it forth as we launch into the new year. Thus share the Lord. To his anointed, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunders the bars of iron and i will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that i the lord which called thee by name am the god of israel will you lift up your voice and begin to declare the doors of the year 2014 is open before me bringing in blessings bringing in treasures bringing in every good thing i need Raise your voice. What you say at the beginning is very crucial. Declare it right now. Boldly, confidently, expectantly. Lo baranda kokoto ramanda la ba shakata raba. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus, the two leaf gates are open before me; they shall not be shut. No door shall be shut against me this year. 2014 every great door that belongs to me is hereby open in the name of jesus thank you lord blessed be the name of the lord in jesus wonderful name we are praying in jesus name we are praying i decree that no door shall be shut against you this year i decree by the authority of jesus vested upon me on the platform of this commission no door that belongs to you shall be shut against you this year god declared let there be light and there was light I decree today that every open door that belongs to you will be flung open with the two leaf gate. In Jesus' precious name. Before you take your seat, welcome your neighbors to your right and to your left again into the new year on this first Sunday. And assure them this year will be a year of exceeding grace. Exceeding grace, strange works, strange acts, exceeding grace. Touch two, three more people with assurance and then give Jesus a big clap and a big shout. It's worthy of our prayer. You may please be seated. Shout hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. I want to welcome each and every one of us again. 
wonderful and blessed people of God. In today's first Sunday of the year 2014, our year of exceeding grace. And as it has been declared, so it will answer in your life. Amen. This year will make strange difference in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. This year will be most remarkable in your life, in your career, in your businesses, in your families, in the precious name of Jesus. It shall be sickness-free year for you. It shall be struggle-free year for you. It shall be hardship-free year for you. It shall be calamity-free year for you. It shall be untimely death-free year for you. It shall be failure-free year for you. It shall be nightmare-free for you. It shall be affliction year. It shall be affliction-free year for you. And it shall be most fruitful, most impactful, most profitable, most elevating most lifting most joyful year for you and all of you who believe say I receive it I believe it I run with it it shall be most profitable for me in the name of Jesus Amen give God another big hand it's worthy of our praise As it has just been read to us, the prophetic focus for this month is prayer and fasting empowers fulfillment of prophecy. Prophecies, as we begin this morning, are simply pray knowledge. Of God's plan. Prophecy simply means the pre knowledge, or if I may put it this way, the communication of the plan of God. It is the unveiling of the pre knowledge of the plan of God for your life. Prophecy also means the first telling, not foretelling, but the first telling, that is speaking forth the plan of God, unveiling the program of God for an individual, for a church, for an institution, for a nation, as the case may be. It's a way of God telling you ahead of time what he wants to do for your life. And for us as winners family, God has spoken concerning us in the year 2014. And what did he say? That in the year 2014, what will be your experience? What will you be enjoying? What will you be swimming in? And it shall come to pass in your life. You see, in a lot of scriptures, you find it written, it shall come to pass. God speaks to make it come to pass. God does not speak to make us feel good. He speaks to make good. Now, listen again. God does not speak to make us feel good. He speaks to make good. He speaks to make good. He makes good his word. 
Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. For God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a God of fun. Neither the son of man that he should say, I am sorry. The word repent means to apologize or to change or to resign on statement being made earlier. At he said it, and shall he not do it? Or at he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So anything and everything God says is as good as done. Is as good as done. So as far as God is concerned, the year is already loaded with exceeding grace. Shout it, I believe it. Now you must believe it because it is what you believe that you become. God does not say what he will do. He says what he has already concluded done. So as far as we are concerned this year, there shall not be shame for you. I said there shall not be reproach for you. There shall not be disappointment for you. But for the thing that God says to come to pass, we must be fully engaged. We must engage prophecy to make it come to pass. And God has laid down for us in his word what steps to take to see prophecies fulfilled. And that's what we're looking at this morning. In the series of teaching, every Sunday, that is captioned, Understanding the Blessedness of Prayer and Fasting. Understanding the Blessedness of Prayer and Fasting. And we want to continue based on this series by making us to see that God's commandments are ordained for our profiting. God's word are not burdensome. God's word are to punish us and not to punish us. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and verse 17. God's word makes it very clear that all scriptures is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, profitable for reproof, profitable for correction and for instruction unto righteousness profitable say with me profitable say it again profitable god's word is meant for our profit and in first john chapter 5 verse 3 the bible tells us that for this is the love of god that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome his commandments are not burdensome. And fasting is one of such specific benefits as contained in God's word. God's word is profitable. And fasting is the key to one of such profits that we derive when we engage in it. And so as we engage in this 21 days of prayer and fasting that commences tomorrow, I see us stepping into new and strange realms of profits in our lives yeah. among such profits of prayer and fasting is the fulfillment of prophecy the fulfillment of prophecy and we see a very practical dimension of it when queen esther fasted leading other children of israel as a result of a pending danger that was upon them. There was a scheme by a man close to the government to eliminate all the children of Israel. And Mordecai, who happened to be the head of the children of Jews out there, sends to Queen Esther, look, do something about this matter. 
because of a time like this is the reason why God has put you there. And Esther said in chapter 4, verse 16, get all the children of Israel together to go on a three-day fast, and I also will fast. And in the process, I will go to the king. That even though it's according to the law, but the fasting power will make a way for us. And as she did with others in chapter 5, in verse 2, specifically, the Bible tells us that as Esther approached before the king, she obtained favor in his side because fasting broke the barrier. Fasting destroyed the opposition to make a way for her. After these 21 days of prayer and fasting, every barrier on your way will give way. Yeah. Every misfortune will turn into favor for you. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus. And by the end of that chapter, the story of destruction that awaited the children of Israel was turned onto the head of the schema of evil. You know something? As God delivers you, in the course of this prayer and fasting, all your enemies will take your place. I said, concerning the destruction meant for you, all your enemies will take your place in it. This is the reason why we must be very careful not to sell out our birthright to the belly like Esau. Esau sold out his birthright for a morsel of bread. According to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16, which gives a summary of the incidents in Genesis chapter 25, he said, And be not as profane as Esau. Hebrews 12, 16, who for one more of meat sold his birthright. He couldn't keep his belly. His belly became his God. He said, What is birthright to me? Give me the red pottage. Let me eat. And he ate it and he lost it all. May one meal not make you miss your blessing. Yeah. Philippians chapter 3, verse 19, Paul was warning that the, the, Philippians, the Philippians should be careful not to make their belly their God. Eating and eating and eating can lead to eating away your destiny. Fasting is to help you get spiritually stable to catch up with the things that god is said to do in your life at a particular period therefore i decree for you discipline required at this fasting period in the name of jesus somebody said you know i've never done it before everything starts someday Somebody says, you see, when I don't eat at 12 noon, my ass will be turning. May you never see danger that will make you forget about food. If your child is sick, do you ever remember that you need to eat? No. You must begin from somewhere. And I decree that as we go through this exercise, unique strength for discipline shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. However, we must be reminded that it is prayer that gives value to fasting. If you don't pray, fasting is a waste. By fasting, you express your desperation and by prayer, you express your desires. By fasting, you express your desperation. But by prayer, you express your desire. There are two different things, even though working together. That's why the Bible emphasizes, this kind goeth not except by prayer and fasting. By prayer and by fasting. Fasting is a spiritual backup. It cannot take the place of prayer. It is a spiritual backup. It cannot take the place of prayer. So when you are fasting, you are encouraged to set aside time to pray as well. They go together. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Fasting without prayer is hunger strike without knowing. 
Fasting without prayer is hunger strike without knowing. As you engage in this exercise, I believe that you will maximize the blessing of it in the precious name of Jesus. Now, it's important to note that without prayer, prophecies will be paralyzed. No matter how potent a prophecy is, until you begin to pray, you don't realize the blessing of it maximally. So our engagement in prayer is a way of loading the prophecy to come to pass. It is our prayer that gives mobility to prophecy to its destination. Our prayer gives mobility to prophecy into its destination. Prophecy will remain on the same spot until men begin to praise them through. That's why you don't watch prophecy. You push prophecy. You push prophecy. You push it in prayer. God said, this is my year of exceeding grace and I must see it come to pass. God cannot lie. I cannot face shame this year. Lobrun Sickness is not my portion this year. Stagnation is not my portion this year. We push prophecy by prayer. We push prophecy into fulfillment via prayer. We'll quickly look at two things here before our time expires. Number one, is the profitable approach to fasting profitable approach to fasting everything about life that will yield the result is dependent on approach approach determines the result without a change of approach there cannot be an improvement of results without a change of approach there cannot be an improvement of result if the result you have is not satisfactory change the approach doing the same thing the same way is the reason why you are having the same result what approach must i give to get the best out of fasting number one Prepare to engage your heart in seeking the Lord. Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. Your heart is God's access into your life. Your heart is God's access into your life. God sees your heart before he hears your voice don't speak with your mouth until your heart has spoken first samuel chapter 16 verse 7 man looks to the outward appearance but god looks on the heart Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Later part of that verse. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. The Lord said to the people of Israel, Turn ye even unto me with all your heart. And then with fasting, your heart before the fasting, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with all your heart, with all your heart. And then with fasting, not fasting first, but your heart first, and with weeping, that is prayer, and with mourning, that is soberness, your heart first. 
Your heart. Why your heart? Because the preparation of the heart in man, Proverbs 16.1, determines the answer from the Lord. Proverbs 16.1. The preparations of the heart in man, the preparation of your heart, determines the answer of the tongue that comes from the Lord. So it is your heart that determines your answers. It is your heart that determines your part. It is your heart that determines your portion. Your heart, your heart. Before your mouth opens, let your heart be open. This is very important so that you will not find yourself in futile exercise. Listen to this. It is not only Christians that fast. I'm sure you are aware of that. Muslims fast. Even magicians fast. Occultic people fast. Habalists fast. In order to gain access into the realm of their own spirit world. What fasting does is to take you from this natural world into the spiritual realms. In their own case, to the evil realm. In our own case, to divine realms. So, there is no peculiarity about fasting. Except your heart is prepared to meet with your God. It is your heart that determines your path from God. Prepare your heart. Make it clean. Make it void of evil. Make it pure. Make it focused. Your heart. In the same Joel chapter 2, verses down to verses 13 and 14, after verse 12, he said, And rend your heart and not your garment. Rend your heart, not your garment. That is, open your heart. Don't come out with open display in the physical as much as you do on the inside and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repented him of evil your heart place your hand on your heart and speak to your heart my heart you must open during this prayer and fasting speak to your heart right now speak to yourself it's not every time you speak to God sometimes you need to speak to yourself speak to your heart speak to your heart speak to your heart my heart must open open to god my heart must be clean my heart must be right thank you jesus blessed be god forever in jesus precious name number two what do you do define your prayer goals and objectives define your prayer goals and objective why do i want to engage in this fasting that is for what purpose purpose what are the things i'm looking forward to in this prayer and fasting clearly defined you've heard me perhaps say where there is no definition there will be deviations the heart of people are unstable because it is not clearly directed When John went to the island of Mark Patmos in Revelation chapter 1, hear what John said. Verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the island that is called Patmos for the word of god for the word of god for the word of god and for the word of for the testimony of jesus christ there was a clear definition and i was in the spirit of the lord say verse 10 and verse 11 and i heard a great voice as of a trumpet behind me saying because he was focused he had a defined objective he had no problem quickly 
who came to heaven. I've mentioned the story of Esther earlier. In Esther chapter 4, there was a clearly defined objective for the fasting. They were not just fasting for fasting's sake. Don't let your fasting be empty. Give direction to your fasting. Give direction to your fasting. Without a focus, there cannot be a target. Give clear direction to your fasting. Why am I fasting? What do I want to achieve through this fasting? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Esther chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. Neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. There was a clear purpose. Ezra chapter 8, verses 21 and 20, 23. Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. Ezra said, we found it not necessary and i proclaimed a fast there i proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava. for what purpose that we may afflict ourselves before god to seek of him a right way for us to seek a right way for us to seek of him so your own case may be for direction your own case may be for intervention Maybe you are confronted with certain situation and opposition. In the case of Ezra, they were fasting for direction. In the case of Jehoshaphat, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, they were fasting for intervention. The enemy was on their neck. Three nations came and they needed the way of escape. For the case of Esther, they were fasting for a quick turnaround. There was a looming danger on their head and they were fasting for a turn around. For some other person, it may be concerning your business breakthrough. For five years, you have not succeeded in doing any business. You want to fast your way through. For some others, it is for family intervention. Nobody has been married in your home for the past 20 years and you need an intervention. I'd like you to clearly define. It doesn't have to be too many things. But let it be some things very specific. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This time around, my God will make a way for you. God who answered Esther will answer you. God who answered Jehoshaphat will answer you. God who answered Ezra will answer you. Maybe it's is some kind of habit that has made a mess of your life some drinking habit, some smoking habit, some immorality that has held you down in chains father this time around i must be free and god is going to answer you quickly so what are we saying define your purpose for the fasting don't let it be tomorrow that you start doing it do that as soon as the service is over in case you don't have it yet don't let the one the two the three the four pass without you having a clear definition number three profitable approach to fasting engage in demonstration of love engage in demonstration of love in your fast in isaiah chapter 58 Hear what the scripture says there. Is this not the fast that I've chosen? Verse 6. To lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Now, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? So remember the hungry people during this fasting. And that thou bring the poor that is cast out of their house. When thou seest the naked, thou cover him and thou and that thou hide not thyself from his own flesh now look at this quickly there are three things that goes together many times prayer fasting giving giving if you read the teaching of christ in matthew 
chapter 6, Jesus said, When thou fastest, when thou, when thou prayest, when thou doest your harms, and then when thou fastest. And then in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 10, there is a man called Colinius there. The Bible tells us three things about the man. One, he was a man who prayed, he was a man who fasted, and he was a man who gave harms to the people. He gave harms to people. He gave harms to people. So giving has a way of facilitating effect of fasting. Giving. Giving to the Lord. Giving to the poor. Doing charities to people who actually need it. It goes together. So, demonstrate your love to the needy. Especially among your brethren. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. Do good to all men. Beginning from the household of God. Let your brethren first be satisfied. Before you remember outsiders. Harms given. That does not stop there. It goes also to forgiving those who offended you. It is time, fasting time is time for forgiving your offenders if there are. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. If thou forgivest not those who offend you, your heavenly father will not forgive you. He will not hear your prayer. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you don't, don't ever expect him that he will forgive you. It is also time for you to refuse to get offended in God or in others. It is time to deal away with offenses. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 9. Then shall thou call and the Lord will answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, Here am I. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the yoke, don't put yoke on people's neck. It is time for you if you are owing your staff pay them what belongs to them if you are owing somebody in your business partnership give them what belongs to them you can't hold what is not yours and expect god to give to you what belongs to you and what more he said putting away and the putting forth of the finger and speaking of vanity putting forth the finger means accusation stop accusing others stop Taking people, others as responsible for the situations you are going through. Stop getting offended in God. I've been serving God all this while. I can't see anything he has done for me. God is not the reason for what you are going through. Don't be offended in the church. In the church leader. In your co-members. In your service unit where you belong to. Can you see I was in trouble? They didn't come to greet me. Put those, stop the pointing of finger at others. Put away all vanity. Don't be offended in others. Because offense is dangerous. Matthew 11, 6. Offenses will come. But if you allow yourself to be the scapegoat, you will be gone off. And blessed is he, Jesus speaking, whosoever shall not be offended in me. If you are offended in God, you will not be defended by God. Those who take offense in God will lose defense from God. Those who take offense in God will lose defense from God. If you are offended in God, you will lose your defense from God. God is not responsible for the things, negative things that are perhaps happening to you. I fasted last year, there was no result. Year before, I fasted, there is no result. I don't know why God has forgotten me. He didn't forget you. You need to ask, what could be the reason why I didn't get my answer? You need to find out about your approach. You need to reveal your position. Because God is constant. I am the Lord, I change it not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Malachi 3, 6. 
Hebrews 13, 8. Love God in your fasting. Love people. Love the church. Love the world. Refuse to be offended. If there's anyone against whom you have any heart, forgive them. Shout hallelujah. And number four, profitable approach to fasting, we must come confessing and forsaking our sins. Confess and forsake your sins. Please note, as human, sometimes you fall into errors. God does not condemn you when you fall. But he feels disappointed when you remain in the fall. That's why the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deserve ourselves. First John chapter 1, verses 9 and 8, and verses 9 and 10. First John chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. If we say we commit no sin, we deceive ourselves. Verse 8. And the truth is not in us. And verse 9 said, but if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, atones for us. Why is it necessary for our sins to be taken out of the way? Because sin will hinder God from work. His eyes are purer than to behold iniquity. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 13. The eye of the Lord are purer than to behold iniquity. God wants to look at you, but he cannot for as long as sin is on you. He cannot for as long as sin is on you. So, sin can blind the eye of God from sin man. Sin can blind the eye of God from looking at man. At this prayer and fasting time, sin shall not hinder God from seeing you. Thou heart of pure eyes to behold evil. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 and 2. The hand of the Lord are not sure that he cannot save, neither is he deaf that he cannot hear you. But your iniquity, your iniquity have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Can you see that? So if sin is not taken away, God is taken away. Sin will either take you away from God or take God away from you. John 9, 31. For we know that God heareth not sinners. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Until they turn, God does not return. Until they turn, God does not return. And will forgive their sin, and thereafter I will heal their land. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsake them shall obtain mercy. So if there are things that you find yourself falling into, Father, I receive your forgiveness. And I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And I receive your help not to go back into that sin. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. What are the blessedness of fasting? Quickly. Why are we fasting? Number one. Like I've said to you, you must set the goals. One of the goals you must set is for deliverance from all evils. Deliverance from all evils. Deliverance from all evils. Luke chapter 11 verse 4. As Jesus taught his disciples to pray, among other things, he said that we should pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You see, there are temptations and there are evils. 
Temptations are the things you can resist, but evil are the things you need divine help from. Some of you have faced certain situations that you can't tell how you escaped. You can't tell you are already programmed to fall into sin, but somehow the hand of God just made you to escape. That is the evil that Jesus talked about. We, we should pray. You see, discipline can make you overcome temptation, but you need divine power to overcome evil. You need divine power to overcome evil. Discipline can help you to resist temptation, but you need divine power to overcome evil. And that power is released during fasting. You know, the enemy came and tempted Jesus. It was not just temptation. The Bible says, and Satan taketh him. Satan taketh him. He carried him. There are certain evils that just come to sweep people off their feet. That's why you find good people who never plan to sin. They just saw themselves inside sin. The enemy came and lifted them. Satan came and take it, he take it him. He swept him off his feet. And Jesus was just returning from fasting. So he had heavy weight. Satan take it him and he couldn't, he couldn't throw him off. And after the temptation was over, the Bible says, and Satan left him alone. There are certain evil that will not leave you alone. Until you have fasted and prayed. Hear me again. Discipline may make you overcome temptation. But you need divine power to overcome evil. So you have certain habits holding you down. As you wait on the Lord in prayer and fasting. Father, this is a shame to me. This is an abuse of my redemption. This is tampering with my testimony. Everybody says he's a lover of God, he's a Christian, but he's a fornicator. But he's a liar. I don't know why he's lying. He's fornicating, but he's lying. You need to stand before God and cry, Lord, rescue me from the shame. There are men who truly love their wives, but they can't stop committing adultery. They can't stop it. They can't stop it. Because an evil came and swept them off. Discipline may help you to overcome temptation, but when it is evil, you need divine power. You need divine power. There are men who just finish having affairs with their wives, and the next minute they are looking for other women. This is an evil. There is a plague. There is a plague. There are certain families where they have certain plague. All the men there are adulterers. All the women there are liars. You need divine help. You need rescue. Which can only be obtained in prayer and fast. It's just this the fasting I've chosen to lose the bands of wickedness. During this prayer and fasting, every band of wickedness shall be loose from your life. Some don't have problem making money, but they have the habit of just spending and spending and spending. They are wasteful. Wasteful. Make millions and billions, but wasteful, wasteful, cannot trace anything done with the money. So you see, you need, you need, this is why we are praying. This is why we are fasting. There are forces that are beyond discipline. They are beyond discipline. They are beyond decisions. They are beyond determination. I will not do it again. I will not, oh Lord, I will not do it again. They are beyond that. They are beyond that. Hallelujah. David prayed. Psalm 19, verses 12 and 13. 19, 12 and 13. He said, Lord, deliver me from presumptuous sin. Who can understand his errors? That is it. Sin is a mystery. You can't understand it. Cleanse me, cleanse down me from secret faults. There are things I don't like. And in verse 13. He said, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. David loved God. He loved God. When the evil came and swept him off. That's why he prayed this prayer. What are the other things you should expect as blessings of fasting? 
blessing facilitates answers to our prayer. And God who sees in the secret shall reward you in the open. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 7. It facilitates answers to prayer. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, he said, um, I will hear from heaven. Number three, blessedness of fasting is to secure favor from God. Favor from God. After Esther prayed and fasted in chapter 4, in chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, favor answered in his life. And finally, fasting will give you empowerment for fulfillment of prophecy. Empowerment for fulfillment of prophecy. Fasting and prayer will give you empowerment. Empowerment for fulfillment of prophecy. Leria kakaranda kike 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 kike. Etienne sisi arata kata na rada moshe kedeba. God promised every church growth. He said, "Little flock, it is the Father's will to give you the kingdom." But not every church is growing. Not every church is growing because not every church is praying. Azazara di kike dea. A great door and effectual is open before you, but there are many adversaries. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. Satan stood on the way and said, You will not go anywhere. You will not go. Say with me, I must go. Say it again, I must go. You see, you must stand in the gap if you want God to fill up the gap. You must stand in the gap if you want God to fill up the gap. You must stand in prayer if you want to take a good stand over the enemy. You must travel in prayer to prevail over your enemies. God promised Jacob that he would be greater than his brother. For but over 20 years he was run away. The brother threatened him, any day I see you, I will kill you. Yet the brother threatening him was supposed to serve him. Until one day, Jacob went to the prayer and said, Lord, enough is enough. I will not let you go until you bless me. And as he traveled, he prevailed. That's chapter 32 of Genesis, verses 24 to 25. Meanwhile, in chapter 25, verse 23, the Lord has said, the, young, the older shall serve the younger. I will not let you go. And then in chapter 33, as he appeared, the Bible says, and Esau, kissed him he welcomed him his killer became his kisser in the place where judgment is waiting for you you shall be embraced by the hand of god rise to your feet right now receive strength receive strength for this exercise i will not eat up my destiny i will not self up i will not sell out to a morsel of bread my story must change this time around are you truly praying pray for a change pray for strength right now cry out your soul before the lord Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Please get seated. Just one minute. We'll soon be closing the service. You are here this morning. You know you are not born again. You lived your life the way you wanted. All through last year. You have entered into the new year. Is that the way you will continue to go? You need to think. You need to think. You need to think. You need to think. Will you continue to deceive yourself? Will you continue to be plain hypocrisy before God? You need to think. You need to think. Think of the journey on which you are going. Are your ways right before God? If they are not, can't you make it right right now? Have a rethink of your life. God does not answer sinners. John 9 31. You can fast, you can pray, God will not answer you. The best you will get is crumbs from the table. Why don't you make yourself a proper child of God and gain full access to the blessing of God? Wherever you are seated, you know you are not born again and you want to be born again right now, I want to pray for you. Will you quickly stand to your feet now? And let me pray 
with you, with the entire church. God bless you for your great decision. It is the decision you make today that will determine your destination tomorrow. The decision you make today determines your destination tomorrow. More people are standing up. If you are one of them, stand up quickly, stand up quickly. Don't wait for the next person. And you know you have been a backslider. All through last year, you are one leg in, one leg out. Why don't you be two legs inside right now? Already, some are eager to come. Come quickly, all of you who are standing up and are coming. God bless you. You want to be restored back to the faith? Carry your Bible and whatever you come to church with. As you are coming, come right now, come right now, come right now. Church, aren't you excited? See young men, see young women running to Jesus. Telling the devil, I'm tired of following you. God bless you. If you are coming, come with eagerness. Come quickly, come quickly, come with speed. Hasten yourself down here. My God. Are you watching others leaving you behind? You are still seated there. You are watching. You seem to be unmoved. Don't let trouble move you. Let your decision move you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Church, you can't tell me you are tired of clapping. See what God is doing on this first Sunday of the year. Saving souls. Rescue men and women from danger from afflictions of the devil changing lives thank you lord hallelujah now while they are coming i want ushers please quickly help us here we have the prophetic welcome word to 2014 our year of exceeding grace here you have it with a photograph of god's servant bishop Oedipo, our president and his wife please quickly circulate it I hope you have them here. Ushers, please move with speed. Quick, just put them in bales in the hands of individual. Pick, just copy, a copy. Don't pick for anybody because next Sunday we are still going to circulate it. Those who are not here today will have their copies next Sunday. Just pick a copy and immediately you start reading it. You start prophesying the prophecy inside it upon your life. Thank you, Jesus. Also, we have the 21-day prayer and fasting expectation card. The prayer and fasting expectation card please pick just a copy for yourself uh don't pick for somebody else will be circulating all through this period pick a copy for yourself thank you jesus thank you jesus bow your heads with me stop your writing for a while bow your heads place your right hand on your chest some individuals are still running down if you are still there run down quickly pray this prayer with me all of you in front